Earlier in the week, he said this race was 99% show, 1% sport. But after that Grand Prix, even Max Verstappen admitted he can't wait to come back to Las Vegas because that was 100% show, 100% sport, 100% entertainment. Welcome to your post-race show here on F1 TV from Las Vegas. I don't know how we're going to adequately sum up that race on this show. Welcome, guys. Me, Will Buxton, James Hinchcliffe, and Jack Doohan to take you through everything. And when I say everything, that race was everything that we hoped it would be. Is this a two-hour post-show? I hope so. Because we have a lot to cover based on what we just witnessed. It was incredible <laughs> from start to finish. It was brilliant, wasn't it, Jack? Yeah, I think there was so much anticipation, so much build-up, so much hype coming into this Grand Prix. So to have a race like that to really kick Sunday off and it continue all the way through the end, I think we're all just waiting for next year. <laughs> we're so excited to come back for that for the race to actually pull through the, the circuit, which seemed a little bit touch and go for a driving side, just ended up into being such a circuit to race on. All the drivers said this was a, a racing circuit more than a qualifying circuit. The real thrill would come when the race actually begun. For me, I think that that played out. For me, I think it was the most exciting race of the season. Hinch, Jack, would you agree with that? We were just talking about this before I went on air, by a country mile. I mean, I don't think there's a race that even comes close to the level of excitement. That many passes for the lead, genuine passes, not crazy tire dig or, you know, just easy DRS passes. Those guys were racing each other. And even Leclerc, gutted to not win the race, understandable. But he said, Man, that was a lot of fun. Even on the radio, that was a good race. And then in the car, by going to the Bellagio, that was just a, so much fun. Max agreeing, Checo agreeing. I think everybody in the stands agreeing. It was, it was great. Because, okay, look, we look at the result. It's another Max Verstappen win. It's not that simple. It wasn't that simple at all, no. You had Max, five-second penalty, thinking that he's going to soar off into the distance before the pit stop. All of a sudden, one lap to the next, Charles is on his rear bumper, making an overtake, forcing them to box early. And then it seems like the race is under control before another late, before another perfectly timed safety car for the guys who pick box on lap one. And all of a sudden, Checo looks like he's in contention for the win. Moves at turn one, moves at the end of that long straight down the strip, moves in corners we'd never expected to see move. Some with DRS, some without. Multiple changes of the lead. I loved it. We're going to have to get into it. Uh, <laughs> let's, start at, crazy, let's, start, yeah. let's start at the start because it all kicked off at the start. Verstappen with a great getaway, even though there was that dirty side of the track and the greasy part of the track because of uh, the, the oil that was put down uh, on the driver's parade and contact immediately. Well, not contact, but forcing them wide. As Charles said, I think Max just didn't have the grip. Max admitted didn't have the grip, but this really set the time for the afternoon. It did. I mean, it looked a little bit suspect, to be honest, into turn one. <laughs> I mean, Max has done that kind of thing before. Because of how many other drivers behind him had issues, though, DC and I talked about this in commentary. I thought that was a good argument for Max's case. But then the five-second penalty comes. But still, uh, into turn one, lots of chaos, lots of drivers getting caught out, cold temperatures, full fuel, all that fun stuff. But uh, it just, yeah, like I say, it was the start of everything to come. It really was. Uh, we're going to run down the order very quickly. Verstappen, your winner, Leclerc P2, Perez P3, then Ocon, Stroll, Sainz, Hamilton, Russell, Alonso, Oscar Piastri in P10. The reason I'm telling you uh, all of that is because we've got our first guest uh, of the day, or we'll do in a second when he makes his way down here, Oscar Piastri, who had an amazing race and was running really high up all the way through. Hey, Hello, mate. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? Uh, not bad. Not bad. P10. Man, you deserve more than that today. You really did. What a try. First of all, for us, that was the most exciting race of the season. How was it from behind the wheel? Uh, it was definitely eventful and, and pretty entertaining, to be honest. Um, yeah, obviously carnage at turn one, which I thought would be the case. Um, so starting at the back wasn't as bad as it potentially looked. Um, and then, yeah, the pace was, was really good. Um, switched on the tyres well compared to a lot of others, which was cool. Um, yeah, just a shame that we had to stop again. Uh, yeah, we were looking really good until that point. I think we, we could have gone to the end easily, and that would have been P4. What changed from quali that was so disappointing into a race which promised so much? Your guess is as good <laughs> as mine. Really? I, I, I don't know. I think yesterday was not very uh, representative of our pace. I think we had a lot more than that. We just kind of got caught out by using one set of tires. Um, you know, I don't 
think we had the pace to challenge right at the front, but I think we could have got into the top 10. So I think today makes, you know, yesterday makes today look a thousand times better. But I think in saying that today was a bit of a surprise, the pace that we, we managed to have. So, um, yeah, I don't know why we were, you know, we we're struggling a lot with the tyres yesterday and today they're our best friend. So it's um, the joys of cold track, new track and, and Pirelli tyres. So walk me through the tyre strategy choice a little bit there because you guys went hard, hard at the beginning. So two yeah. stop was obviously your game plan from the beginning. Yeah, we, we went on the hard at the start um, just to try and do something different. And, you know, the, the graining yesterday was a massive issue for everyone. Uh, I, I got a puncture with, with Lewis, so I had to, to box. It was too early to try and do a one step on, on to the medium. So we used the hard um, and then just prayed for a safety car that never came. So um, we were kind of screwed from that point on. Anyway, I think the timing of the safety car, you know, that puncture actually didn't hurt us that much with the timing of the safety car, I think. Um, you know, you look at Ocon, that's more or less where I was, and um, he's ended up P4. So. Uh, just a, a shame that a few things didn't go our way. Felt like not a lot went our way this weekend. Um, I guess that is Vegas for you. Uh, what happens now? What does Oscar Piastri do on Saturday night in Las Vegas? Very good question. Um, I know uh, Zed's playing your hotel tonight. Is he? He is. Okay. Um, Doesn't seem thrilled with that one. Interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, Bed, not sleep. Maybe, yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, Today's actually quite early, like I'm quite fresh. I'm finally used to the time, this crazy time zone, so. Now uh, you gotta switch straight back to Abu Dhabi. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. Um, yeah, interesting double header planning going <laughs> to the other side of the world. But uh, anyway. If you, if you push through, we actually yeah, end up getting into Abu Dhabi night time. Exactly. If we go through. Because we're in Australian time now. Kind yes, of. Yeah. yes. It's That's a shame a, it's not the season finale and then I could just go straight home and be sweet. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it normally yeah, takes me about two weeks right? to get used to it at home. So There's, a, uh, there's an idea yeah. uh, for Liberty so, moving uh, forward. Exactly. So Final round finale, Australia. Yeah. Exactly. Vegas, oh. Vegas, Vegas, Melbourne. Oh, that's a pretty nasty double header, though. Yeah, that's yes. that's, that's it, a flight. It couldn't be. Yeah. I, it's hey, not it's any not shorter than, uh, than Abu Dhabi, though. <laughs> the way we have to go, we may we as well. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep love going. This has gone so far off track, but I love it. Yep, great. Uh, you keep going. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the show, man. We appreciate Cheers. it. Enjoy Thanks, tonight, guys. whatever you end up doing. Thank you. Good Cheers. Uh, we must, of course, talk about Oscar's teammate, Lando Norris. A really horrible crash. Um, for a long time, the only DNF in the race. Uh, was taken to the medical center, uh, and the team says has been taken to local hospital for some checkups. Uh, guys, what, what did you make of this, of this accident? Yeah, it was such a shame. You know, early on in the race, heavy car, low grip obviously as well and you could just see the car seemed to bottom out as it went over the bump on entry and just lost the car on that snap tried to correct it and overcorrected it it's something so simple and you know could have happened to anyone honestly he's at a, at a critical time of the race the car's at a difficult moment so it's so unfortunate because it's it looks so easy but it can go so quickly because it's one of those things you know you got all that fuel on board really for the first time of the weekend you set your ride heights to where, they, where you need them to be once the tires are up to temperature for you know optimum performance. That early in the race, tires aren't quite there, fuel's not quite there, you know, fuel's heavy. You could just drive on a bit of the racetrack six inches left or right from what you've done before, hit a bump you don't know is there. He, it sounded like he hit two in a row mm. and it just upset the car enough. Yeah. Get offline in that fast sweeper. I heard some of the guys say those things weren't even easy flat, even though they looked pretty straightforward. No, that second left definitely wasn't Spe easy flat. Yeah, especially on, on cold tires. So it's <laughs> it's so unfortunate. Nothing Lando really could have done, just kind of wrong place. Uh, we wish him well. Hope to see him in Abu Dhabi team saying, yeah, just going for some uh, precautionary checkups at local hospital. Uh, right. Right, we're going to send it back to the studio now to uh, talk to Sam Collins because Max Verstappen's day was highly eventful, not just the start for which he was given a five-second penalty, but also contact with George Russell during the race as well. Sam can take us through each of these incidents because, Sam, Max Verstappen had uh, really quite, a, quite an intriguing afternoon. Max Verstappen really did earn victory in the Las Vegas Grand Prix. It was probably one of his hardest wins of the season, and it all started as soon as the lights went out. We saw this a little bit earlier, but the battle with uh, Charles Leclerc started straight away. The Ferrari here didn't get the best getaway off the line, whereas the Red Bull really, really did. But as they came into the first corner, Charles Leclerc sees the threat and starts to close the gap onto Max Verstappen. You can see at the bottom of the screen down here. And you can see Max Verstappen, not really much space to go into, but Charles Leclerc leaving him good racing room. 
but Verstappen sees the threat, tries to get the run on the inside of the Ferrari. But the problem is, Max's turn into the apex is much tighter than that of Leclerc. And the Red Bull just loses grip ever so slightly and ends up pushing the Ferrari wide and both drivers go off the track. Now, people with suspicious minds like James Hinchcliffe maybe think that Max did that on purpose. I don't think that's the case. It was just one of those racing incidents, but he did end up forcing the Ferrari off track and that was a problem. And race control said, well, it's jailhouse rock for you, Max. You're gonna get a five second penalty. However, further back in this moment, there were a few other drivers who got the first corner a little bit wrong. Have a look here, Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz both getting a little bit ambitious into there. Sainz hits the, the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and spins himself around, and Alonso just does it all on his own and causes a little bit of chaos behind him. However, later in the race, we had another incident with Max Verstappen. This one was when he was battling with George Russell, working his way back through the field after that initial five second penalty. And he saw it was now or never into this corner here. And I think Russell really hadn't got a clue that Verstappen was there. That's what the FIA said. And at this point, Russell is turning in just going to the apex as normal with no idea the world champion is inside him. Contact, heavy contact, both drivers end up all shook up with damage to their cars. And as you watch from the outside footage, this is what the FIA found. They said they don't believe that Russell knew that Verstappen was there. Russell turned in as normal, caused damage to both cars. And there you can see Verstappen's front wing end plate disappearing off. Not very much damage to the car. And uh, well, a lively end to the American trilogy for the world champion, Will. Oh, how many, how many Elvis references can Sam Collins get into one hit? That was beautiful, mate. Absolutely stunning. Uh, talking about beautiful, stunning races, Aston Martin, from looking like it was all going wrong, Alonso spinning at the start, to pulling it back in the points, and Lance Stroll doing a great job there as well. Yeah, from the back, cool strategy, started on the softs. Picked up a, you know, a few. 10 places on the first lap. Yeah, um, six of those team, were mate. probably from that turn one melee. Uh, a lot of drivers forced wide when Alonso went around and, and uh, Valtteri got in the back of him. Uh, or sorry, Perez got, in the, Perez got in the back of, uh, of Valtteri. But still, I think he made a couple great passes as well. Safety car, got off the saw. I mean, it was perfect. It was really nice execution. Didn't make any mistakes. Just brought home another great result. Yeah, Lance was impressive. No, too. Lance very well. and was looking like he was putting us under threat at the end there with Esteban. Uh, the, the safety car obviously benefited him, Checo and others very well, but also then still drove a great race. No mistakes, clean to the finish and solid points for the team, finishing P5 with, with Russell's five second penalty. So I'm sure from what looked like it was going all wrong, to come back, it, it was an up and down race, like we said, and which is why it's been so good. Fast all day, not fast enough to escape Laura Winter. Lance Stroll uh, is with Laura somewhere in the paddock right now. I've just grabbed Lance Stroll from the media pen. Lance, congratulations, a P5. What an eventful, enjoyable, exciting first race here in Vegas. Sum it up for us from your cockpit. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, it was a lot of fun for sure. Very exciting race from start to finish. Uh, good start, uh, gained a lot of positions, lap one, and then uh, felt really good in the car. I think we were quick throughout the whole race and just kind of picking guys off lap by lap. And uh, it was a very enjoyable race, exciting race from start to finish. Yeah, for sure. Some valuable points for Aston Martin as well. Fernando also up there in the points. And look, from your perspective, I know it's been a difficult season at times. How much does therefore a good result in Brazil, a good result here mean to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's just nice to, yeah, I mean, grab a good result here. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, you know, every, every, anytime you finish in a, in a good position um, and have a good weekend, it feels good. So uh, definitely happy about it. And how enjoyable was it under the lights at this kind of speed that we're seeing here as well? Yeah, yeah, enjoyable for sure. Um, I think the whole weekend uh, was definitely something unique, um, different. The track I really enjoyed racing on, which I think is, you know, kind of the the main thing that, that you know, I, I look for in the weekend. I think it was a, a very exciting, fun race, challenging to manage tires, long straights, with opportunity to overtake. So I think that's always a lot more fun on Sundays than kind of, uh, you know, uh, places we can't overtake. Um, but maybe next year we just got to pull FP2 a little bit further forward and, you know, yeah, not do the 3 a.m. thing again. I'm ready to go to bed. 
yeah, I think a lot of us will be catching up on some sleep. Final question for me before you can head to bed. Obviously, we, we've got Abu Dhabi coming up, the final race of the season. It's been an up and down season for Aston Martin. Will it be finishing up on a high, do you reckon? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think we learned a lot about the car throughout the middle part of the season, like kind of from, uh, you know, Silverstone to Austin, I think was a lot of learning with the car, messing around with different stuff. Um, and then I think once we got to Brazil, we understood and learned a lot about our car. And, um, you know, it still suits some tracks more than others. I don't think this track was really great. We don't have a very quick car in a straight line, but in Brazil, we were generally really quick um, with less straight line speed. So Abu Dhabi is kind of straights, but not as much as here, a lot of corners. So I hope we can finish strong, but um, I think we definitely learned a lot about our car um, and we've been, you know, much stronger since um, kind of Austin, Brazil. So that's good. We'll see. Thanks, Thanks. very much for your Thank time. You. Appreciate it. Go get some rest. Very chatty Lance Stroll. Um, Aston Martin find themselves 11 points behind McLaren going into the last race of the season in Abu Dhabi. It is not done yet for those positions in the Constructors' Championship. Now let's move to talk about Alpine. Pierre Gasly, I know, pretty devastated at the end of that race. It had looked so strong for both drivers all the way through the Grand Prix, but P11 for Pierre, not happy with his strategy. No, unfortunately, just clearly what was working yesterday didn't become a factor today and what wasn't working with Espan obviously got unlucky yesterday proved to work today so it was quite difficult a little bit of issues with the car and also just with the management I think uh, that two stop should have been on the cards for him with how he was feeling and it had to come earlier though once he was in trouble it was a little bit too late 10 laps to go and if he was to stop it would have been coming out at p17 and not beneficial so super disappointing after such a strong p4 yeah. yesterday um, but yeah all learning uh, Esteban had a great result and got great points for the team. Well, that's it. With the strong P4 today was Esteban. It was huge. And from where he started, and think about how the weekend started for them. I oh, mean, that man. team had to work so, so hard to get that car repaired. Well, I switched over, yeah. right? Brand new no, car. Exactly. And uh, and credit to them. And as we talk about as if by magic. the incredible There's drive. A happy man. How are you, buddy? A happy man. That's a pretty good smile yeah, you got I there. Give him a hug. Oh, man. <laughs> the bromance here. Wow. The bromance. Wow. How was that? Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, what a sport, really. It's crazy. You can go through all the emotions in, the, in one weekend, you know, to a very low point yesterday. We didn't seem to catch a break. You know, six difficult races with all sorts of incidents, DNF. Um, you know, we, we've been quite a few re good results, you know, on the table. Um, but today it finally paid off. You know, we never stopped believing in ourselves that we are doing a good job. and. Uh, from 16 to 4th today, uh, yeah, what a crazy race. We knew we could use the car pace to our advantage, but uh, yeah, we never knew we'd, we've done such a good job with the tyres this weekend. Um, and uh, yesterday and today, it's been, uh, it's been on point. So yeah, well done to the team, honestly. And just talk to us about this track, because we were talking to you guys yesterday and everyone was saying, think it'll be more of a race track, you know, looking forward to the, yeah. the Grand Prix. I don't think any one of us expected it to be, when I mean, you get to watch it when you go home and actually see what it, it was, was like. It was good? It was stunning. <laughs> All right. It was stunning. Okay. It was okay. really good. How was it from, uh, from inside the car? It was also mega. Um, you know, I, I always thought with, um, with such long straights, um, it was always going to be a fun race to, uh, to, to go on. Um, it's maybe not the, the most fun qualifying track, but it provides its challenges, you know, with big braking zones, you need the tow, you need things, um, you know, that are quite important. But yeah, in the race, um, you know, I had a blast. And if that was a circuit where it would be tricky to overtake, I would not have come forth today. So it's good that it provides, you know, that racing spectacle. And I think it suits super well Las Vegas. You had some awesome moves in that first stint, just Thank passing you. people left, right, and center. Is that the most fun part of the race for you, just getting a cut through the field like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think when, when people started to degrade and we still had new tires, basically, um, yeah, it was really working to our advantage. And uh, I was hoping people stayed on the medium a bit longer because uh, <laughs> maybe there I could have been in the top three. But... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good enough for for what we've done today. Uh, we got to let you go, but before we do, no we, we got a, we got a, a little bit of radio uh, played out where the team basically said, D "Don't don't put the moves on, just look after the tyres." And about literally five seconds later, you were like, "Nope, straight through." <laughs> no, that's that's not not how it happened. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's we not I feel like how it played out. You, you, no, it's not, you it's feel like you're always having to defend yourself on the radio messages we play on TV. No, it's no, not fair good, to you. But you know what? So I heard position. In, in the radio because I was already making moves, you know, and Pierre was defending, it was tricky. 
And um, in, in, in Esteban's defense, the radio on Las Vegas Boulevard was very poor today, <laughs> where these messages <laughs> were becoming. This is what you guys are saying in commentary. So, there, there's so many streets. There's so many tall buildings, and, and the radio uh, communication's not so great. In um, the big picture let, as well. Let me finish. Let me finish. So I had position, um, and then I got told by Michel after that it was uh, it was whole position. Um, so I did the move, completed the move, and if the team would have asked, you know, for me to give back the position, I would have done. We're so, only but, playing. Uh, no, no, but it's important to to clarify that. You did great. Sure. But Thank thanks for coming yeah, on the show. We're in so much drive, trouble. You had to well leave done. like a minute ago. Thanks, my man. Oops. Uh, yeah. We nailed it. Sketchy radio, radio yeah. call. We nailed it. Sketchy I told radio you the radio things. wasn't good. <laughs> repeat, 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 at the end. repeat. Yeah, a little sorry. cheeky. Oh, sorry. I'm oh. already past. Sorry, guys. It's a bit uh, late. <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, such an important result oh. for the team. No, and uh, on that note, to be honest, it was important that he got past. And the MPA was for struggling. Sure. If he was the whole position, then you would have had Albon coming into his DRS, potentially passing the both of them. And we were a bit one-eyed at the end there. It was one going to take a good result or the both not. So, which was a difficult time turning into 12 points, unfortunate for Pierre, but that's at those times where you have to make those strong decisions. From the happiness at Alpine to the disappointment at Williams. Third row on the grid, lockout, no points on the board today. They're going to be gutted. It's one of those things where I don't know if we have any of the Williams drivers planning on coming by today, but if, we, if they were standing here and you were to say, hey, Alex, where did the pace from yesterday go? I bet the answer is going to be, I don't, I don't know. It's just there seems to be such a. Oh, do, do you have? Some I have a little bit of oh, okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. This Thank why, you very much. This is why this we is my moment. Here. Yeah, he's so good, isn't he? I feel for sure that their quality pace was really strong yesterday. With the toe not being so effective, the car was slippery, so they're able to gain an advantage today. No one was ever two to three seconds further away, so everyone was so close. What really got them wrong was being three to four seconds just behind us two Alpines which meant everyone who stopped in that safety car got that free pit stop directly in front of them on seven lap fresher tires. So you had six cars in that window. And unfortunately from there, their race was over. If the situation was re re bleh, reversed, we would have been in the exact same boat, but luckily just being six cars ahead, being able to have clear air, we were able to help the tire. So the safety car really hurt their race. Really hurt their race. Masks, I think, what could have been a potential high top 10 result, but just got unlucky and unfortunately that's how it happens sometimes it's a crack in theory let's see if alex albon backs that up i hope so <laughs> hey alex um obviously frustrating end of the day when you were running p5 early on in the race just talk me through how it unfolded and whether or not you could have done anything different i guess to hold on yeah i don't actually know to be honest i think it's one of the races where you have to review it and see how it all played out in my opinion the race wasn't going that badly and i was managing quite well um, and then when that safety car came out in the middle of the race, all the cars behind almost got a, well, the cars in the front had a free pit stop, the cars behind decided to stop. So by the end, I was racing everyone on new tires, oh, they were on new tires and I was on old tires. Um, I could just about manage and do my own race, but then as soon as they were starting to overtake me, um, you've just got to push a bit more and that, that emphasizes the graining. The graining just gets worse and worse. And you go offline to defend, you, you lock up a little bit more, you grain more, and it's a cycle. Um, the last two laps, my tires cleaned up again. <laughs> but by that point, uh, the race was over, so I first race. Can you kind of take a lot of positives still from this weekend? I know Abu Dhabi's probably a track layout that's going to be a bit more challenging, but there were lots of positives to take, weren't they, from this weekend? There were, there were. There, there was um, some positives out there. I think qualifying was a clear one. Um, I think for the same reason why qualifying was good for us, it's why the race was bad. We were okay. We were one of the few cars I think that could switch their tyres on in qualifying. And then it came race day. Um, I could tell. I could tell. On lap one and safety car restart, I had more grip than everyone else. And that's a nice sign for, for one lap, but then you know you're likely a little bit hotter on your tyres than everyone else. So, um, yeah, it, it is what it is. We go to Abu Dhabi. We're still fighting. No, none of our rivals scored points. That's important. Um, it's not so Great stuff. Thank you very much, Thank Alex. You. Two for two for uh, Jack Doohan there. <laughs> can't see him, he's off camera looking very, very smug. But Laura Winter uh, has caught up with James Vowles. Let's see if uh, Jack needs to get himself down to the casino uh, later tonight, feeling lucky uh, for the answers that he's given. Not 21. 
Well, it was a race that had so much promise, a weekend that had so much promise, James. I'm sorry to be talking to you in these circumstances. I almost don't know what to say after such a jubilant interview after qualifying and now a P12 and a P16 for Williams. Can you sum up what happened today? I think first and foremost, just not quick enough. I mean, going into the detail of why, um, we had fears about front right graining. Uh, you saw it up and down the grid. You saw, for example, the two Alpines suddenly separated by seconds. We're on the worst end of that, without doubt. You saw that in the first stint on the medium, we were just holding back a pack of six, seven cars, and it was exactly the same on the hard. We were just really struggling to keep those tires alive. Now, the advantage we had in qualifying was that I think others were struggling to get into the tire temperature window. But when they get 20 laps in a row, they can pretty much get there and actually we're too hot at the rear and on that front, uh, just in a poor state. And of course, we saw Alex Albon just fighting so hard, P8, P9, trying to stay in the points, then ultimately just going just going wide at that corner and, and it went away from him. I, I bet the drivers are very disappointed as well with but, what perhaps was a missed opportunity. Very much that. The, the, the thing that we can take, if there is a way mm. of taking positives out of it, is the following. You have two cars that are uh, completely intact. The drivers looked after them despite the tough conditions out there, which puts us in good stead for the final round in Abu Dhabi. We remained ahead of our direct championship rivals. So as bad as it was, we still had Alfa Romeo, Haas and Alfa Tori behind us. And that's who we're fighting in this championship. And on, on the day, what we have to keep doing is that fight those around us and take what is available to us. I don't think there was a point in it today. I don't think that um, the safety car didn't help us, but irrespective, it was pace that was missing. What we're going to do now is go to Abu Dhabi and make sure we reset and take everything available to us there. And that P7 is up for grabs for sure. W without question, we're still ahead. And mm -hmm. um, that's the result of hard work, not at one event, but across the entire season so far. And we're not ready to let go of that yet. Thanks, James. Sorry it wasn't the result you wanted today. Thanks no for the chat. Thank you. Ping, ping. Ping, get thee to the casino. Uh, I, uh, Producer Joe's telling me you're too young to gamble in the casino. I'm too young. Next that. year. Are you actually? I am too young, yes. I, I know, I just, I had this moment during one of the other oh, wow. interviews. I asked what he was doing tonight. He said, well, I'm going to bed because I'm not 21. To Sorry. which Hinch can play for you. Exactly. I cried. And Hinch has done well, so I'm so, yeah, sure. Just give me a couple numbers and I'll yep. throw them on the roulette Perfect. table for me. Yes, for you. And you can do very well from it. Um, to, well, yes. Uh, in the uh, battle for seventh in the Constructors' Championship, not a single team in that fight scored a point today. So Williams fortunate uh, in that regard. Now, one team who was expecting something decent today didn't get it. Mercedes, P7, P8. Obviously, uh, a tricky race for both drivers. Contact for both drivers, for both George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. Uh, that puncture ultimately costing Lewis what could have been a great result at the end. Yeah, both guys had a lot of issues uh, in that regard. You know, Lewis the puncture, that kind of throws your race totally for a loop unless the uh, the safety car falls at exactly the right time. There's that contact. And then for George, you know, the contact that they had, definitely damaging the floor of that car, definitely losing performance. I was a little surprised he was given the penalty, if I'm totally honest, uh, in that one. But at Were the same really? time... I, I, he turned, just turned straight in on him. <laughs> he did. It was a late move. If it was a, I'm not saying Max I mean, listen, I'm penalty. saying um, Max was, look, it was, it was a late move and he was no way past. Right. But you can't just turn in like no one's there. For sure. For sure. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was deemed a racing incident. Okay. But either Do way. Do you think George potentially going into turn 12 goes, okay, I have a mile long straight after here. Why is someone going to dart up my inside and, instead of, you know, and let me give them their toe? It, yeah, it's and potentially there. was just heading, okay, I need to nail this exit. That's all I've and got. And Max even said that on the radio. He was like, I don't think he knew I was coming. No, yeah. I, he, I honestly, he by the look, and at the end of the day, he got the penalty. George potentially should have been looking in his mirrors. All to learn from it. Um, you know, there's probably not like, yes, George, you're completely in the wrong, but that's, that's how it happens. You have to accept that and go, that's the penalty. But then, even with damage, on track, he drove up to fourth. He actually did a very good job. He raced a good race. It's the penalty and the fact that a safety car had oh, punched the field At up, the end, he was flying. He was on fire. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough break for what could have been two strong results for them. One of the drivers promoted, thanks to that five-second penalty, was Carlos Sainz, who ended up finished P6. I guess, like Fernando Alonso, might have thought, at the end of lap one, my race is over. And even the team getting on the radio to him at one point in the race to suggest it might be better to, to call it all a day. And yet, here he is, sixth at the flag, after what started out to be... A really difficult weekend to him, and, and he, he was fuming all weekend, but he turned that fury into fire. Yeah, eight points. I think with how the race panned out, he'd be happy. 
going into the weekend yesterday, missing pole by seven hundredths, obviously before the grid penalty. He, he won't be happy at all thinking of how the race panned out. But a race where we didn't see much of him on TV. It was quite under the radar stuff. But again, due to the track, there was, I think, 3.7 seconds between P4 and P11. So great chance if you do have an advantage to come through and make that happen. Uh, indeed, and uh, just getting the end of the replay there. Um, we're going to have to pull away from it, though, because Laura Winter has tracked down Fred Vasser. Oh, Fred, I came up to you and went, how are we feeling? Because I'd imagine there's an element of mixed emotions, but equally, what an unbelievable race we have seen. True, brilliant racing from both Carlos and Charles. Can you sum up how you are feeling and your reaction to that? Uh, first, happy, because I think it was a great event for the F1. But uh, if you have a look on the show, on the race itself, that everybody was uh, a bit negative before. But I think the, on the sporting side, the race was mega. And for us, we are catching up Mercedes. We are not far away. It's uh, good news. And on the driver side, I think if you consider Carlos with the top Friday that he had, involved into the crash lap one turn one, uh, he was P18 or P20, and he's coming back P6. It's a mega good race. And uh, Charles, it's, uh, he was very, very close to win. I think the safety car was uh, for sure at the worst moment for us into the race, that just after the slow introduction, and uh, well, it is like it is that uh, now we have to try again next week. I don't know if Abu Dhabi will be difficult, but uh, we have to try again and at least to, to be in front of Mercedes. That safety car timing was so unlucky, wasn't it? And look, I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but were you tempted at that point to bring him in the way that we saw Max Verstappen pit? And then obviously you'd lose track position. It's yeah, the gamble, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that it's, uh, we are in a different situation compared to Max because Max pitted a bit earlier than us. That uh, for Max, I think it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. For us, it was just after the slow introduction. It was the worst moment. But uh, okay, that uh, it's another story that we uh, don't want to complain about something. But look, Charles Leclerc, four and four and four to the very last, the last overtaking opportunity he had, he snatched P2 from Sergio Perez. But you could hear that frustration on the race radio, how much he wanted the win. And he was almost torn, wasn't he? How much he enjoyed the race, but equally how much he wanted the win. Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, I think he overtook three times the Red Bull today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think into the season, uh, when you overtook three times, when you were take three times the Red Bull, you win the race. Huh? That, uh, but uh, and it was probably where the, the frustration come from, came from. But uh, overall, I spoke with him that, yes, ah, that we were not far away. But I think he was also convinced that he did a, a mega good race and a mega good weekend. I know you never like to look ahead to the next race when you're so fresh from the pit wall, but I am going to ask you about Abu Dhabi because you have fought with the Red Bulls here. You have overtaken a Red Bull three times here. What's possible then in Abu Dhabi if you are in the mix with them? Uh, Abu we will have uh, one target is to finish in front of Mercedes. That uh, now we are back, we are four points behind, and this will be uh, our goal and my personal one. Thank you very much. Well done today, Fred. Congratulations. Thank you. Merci. Uh, amazing stuff from Fred Vasser. Clear frustration for Charles Leclerc, but what a brilliant drive from him. And a brilliant drive from Carlos Sainz as well. Now, time to talk about the top three. Sergio Perez coming home in third. In doing so, he's locked out second place in the Drivers' Championship. It is the first time in history that Red Bull have had a 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. That also means Lewis Hamilton is now secured in third place in the Drivers' Championship. He can't be caught uh, either. What a race between the two. I mean, where do, where, where do we start? Checo, at one point, was plumb last. It was another Sakir Grand Prix scenario. You know, comes in, changes the front wing, just as he did when he took his first ever Grand Prix win. He's plumb last, and then he's leading the race. It was, it was a majestic drive. He came through really quickly as well. You know, to think of it, at the time where the top three had pitted, he had overtaken up to P4 from being plumb last, put that set of tyres on. So his pace was really, really strong. He boxed, obviously, at the same time as Max did in that safety car. And it didn't seem like at that second part of the stint, the pace was as strong, which was unfortunate as it looked like he was in the perfect position to win this race. Fresh tyres, Charles, five lap old hards in front of him and literally the race ahead of him. But it didn't really fall through. Uh, but still, P3 after a situa situation like that, I think he would have taken that after lap one. Yeah, after lap one, he would have. Uh, after lap 30, he'd probably, probably be a little not. disappointed. You know, it, and that's, that's the ebb and flow, right, of, uh, of, a, of a motor race. And this is Checo doing that brilliant pass. And at this point, you're thinking back to Jeddah, you're thinking back to Baku, you're thinking, all right, he's been in this position before. 
leading. And then even with even with Max coming behind him, he's defended before, but Charles today so Out of nowhere. brave on the brakes. It was wickedly impressive. I feel bad, I mean, Checo, you know, he pulled that save move on him twice. <laughs> so he's gonna be kicking himself a little bit, but he just came from so far back. It's hard to defend. That's what he did in Brazil. That's what he did wrong in Brazil, was he defended against Alonso in a turn one on that last lap when he didn't have to. So he probably didn't, we looked, saw the gap and thought, I think I'm good. But Charles was just, just too brave on the brakes today. Charles drove a sensational race today. Yeah. Actually, we're gonna talk about Charles in a little bit, Laura. She's busy tonight. Uh, uh, she's got Charles Leclerc. Charles, congratulations. P2 today, what a race, what a battle you've had with the Red Bulls. Can you sum it up? How do you reflect? Yeah, well, on one hand, I'm happy because I need to be happy after such a race from a team's um, point of view and also from my own uh, performance. I, there's nothing I've left on the table today and I gave it absolutely all on the uh, until the very last corner in the last lap. And that was obviously very exciting to get that second place from Checo in the last corner. On the other hand, obviously disappointed because I really believe uh, I hate speaking with Aves and I never do that, but I really believe that today without the safety car, the victory was ours because to restart uh, used tires after a safety car was a big disadvantage for us. Mm -hmm. And that's where we lost the race because the Red Bull had new tires at that time. Do you take any positives from today in terms of looking to uh, Abu Dhabi, the fact that you were in the fight with the Red Bulls, the fact you overtook the Red Bulls and certainly the manner in which you did on that final lap against Sergio Perez too? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are lots of positives uh, this weekend, but uh, I think the biggest positive I need to uh, take from a weekend like this is that we are now four points away from Mercedes. And uh, that means that a second place in the constructors will be decided in Abu Dhabi. So, uh, and I am fully motivated to uh, have a great weekend in Abu Dhabi and hope, uh, hopefully uh, finish second in the constructors. That fight will go right down <laughs> to the wire as someone's just told them. We, they love Charles. Uh, congratulations, well done, Charles. There we go, the fight goes on to Abu Dhabi for Ferrari uh, for second place in the Constructors. Uh, we have to finish off by talking about Max Verstappen. We've talked about him uh, and used every superlative we can throughout this season, but on a day when he had a five-second penalty, on a day when he had a damaged car, on a day when Ferrari could, arguably should have taken the win, once again, Max Verstappen proves too much for his rivals. This is probably going to be his favorite win of the year so far just because he had to work so much harder for it. It's, it's, well, that'll hurt him after how much he's been down to. I, <laughs> I know it will. <laughs> I know it will. But like you say, the, the penalty, the damage, passes had to be done on track. It's not like he, it's not like they had an insane pace advantage the no. way we've seen at a lot of other races where, you know, Spy can start 15th and be leading by lap 12. It wasn't like that. Ferrari had a very fast car. His teammate was on his pace for the most part, was there, was in the conversation after being at the back. He had to work so hard for it. He had to really race guys, and I think he enjoyed that. I enjoyed watching it, I hope everybody else did. But it just seemed like, you know what it's like, as a driver starting from pole and winning by 30 seconds, don't get me wrong, it's awesome, it feels great. But when you get on the back foot a little bit, everything's working against you and you pull off that victory, it means so much more. Yeah, I think as well, at the start, that first stint, it seemed like the biggest issue was understanding the tire, knowing how much he could push. They thought once they got that five second penalty, okay, let's let's push, let's open up the gap before the pit stop. But they seemed like everyone was struggling with that graining, struggling with that front right. And that seemed what they got caught out on in that first stint. So knowing that, taking that five second penalty, resetting after the safety car and being back in a prime position, knowing just to take those first five, six laps a little bit easier like he did. And then when everyone started to struggle a little bit in front, that's when he came through and took advantage of them starting to struggle. Jack, thank you so much for being on the show. We've got to let you go now, uh, apparently, but thank you for being on the thank show. Thank you very much. Very much appreciate it. Cheers, guys. And, uh, thank while you. Jack okay. makes a move, thank you, mate. We will hear from Max Verstappen. Hey Max, congratulations. That was a heck of a win, a heck of a drive. Was that one of your most enjoyable ones this season? Yeah, it was definitely a very fun one. I had to work for it. Um, yeah, very hectic. I mean, so much going on, but uh, in a good way, I guess. I mean, of course, in the beginning, that five second penalty was unfortunate. I didn't mean to, to, to push uh, Charles off because we both break late into turn one. But I was, of course, more offline. I just kept on sliding and I couldn't um, keep the car within the, the line. So, yeah, that was rather unfortunate, I guess. But uh, also on the first thing, we were struggling on the tyres. It was a lot of deck for me. Um, so once we pitted, taking the five, pen uh, five second penalty on the hard, I think we had a lot more pace in, in the car. So that was definitely very positive. Um, so I could already see that there we were more competitive, but the gap was quite big. And um, so, um, yeah, then, of course, with the safety car, we came in again 
Um, of course, I, at that time, I had a damaged front wing, yeah. so I had to cope with that as well. So I definitely lost a bit of downforce with that. But it was all drivable, so we, we opted to keep it on. And then to the end, it was fun. Like, we were pushing flat out, uh, you know, to, to the end. Even with those problems in that first in on the tyre and that front wing damage, did you always still feel that if you kind of kept on the limit, you could still win it from where, where, where you It was very out? difficult. On the mediums, for sure not. But on, on the hard tyres, I mean, I felt that it was better for us. And also, I think when Charles came out, he was not that far ahead. Yeah. And uh, I could see the pace was good. You know, even with passing, he was not pulling away. So then, of course, after the safety car, I had to clear uh, the McLaren and, and, um, and an Alpine before I could join the fight. Um, but yeah, somehow on, on the hard tyres, it was a lot better for us. Great stuff, congrats, thanks. Uh, great stuff from uh, Max Verstappen, great questions from Lawrence Barreto. We welcome to the desk Laura Winter. Laura, you have been busy today. I've been you've buzzing been about, yeah. You've been buzzing about all weekend, mate, <laughs> yes. this place. I yes. said in the opener, it's a weird old place, but we were treated to quite the race. Oh, absolutely. And uh, look, we, you know, we can't lie, it, it got off to not a great start. It was an unfortunate start. It was a bad start for Ferrari. And it has ended up with a brilliant race. Well, I think one of the races of the season, yeah, for sure. I'm sure you guys have been saying that. And drivers who've been coming on have also echoed those thoughts. Certainly the likes of Fred and, and Christian similarly saying to me that this has been a brilliant race with great, great racing. Um, and I loved the battles we saw today. I absolutely thought that the racing was amazing. And it came off the back of Brazil as well, let's not forget, where we saw wheel to wheel action and not a single bit of contact. And yes, okay, we saw a bit of contact today. But we've had two races now in a row where we've had a battle for P2 and P3 and, and P3 and P4 come down to the absolute yeah. wire. And we've seen battles all across the grid. And the thing is, I know we're not still fighting for either championship, but what we are fighting for and what these teams are fighting for is P2. That means a huge amount to Red Bull to have finally secured that with both yeah. of their drivers and the, and the constructor standings. And Ferrari equally, Charles Leclerc saying, we have got the wind in our sails now. Just four points behind Mercedes in this battle for P2. That's, Huge. that's magic. And James Fowles, other end of the, um, the paddock from here. Look, they've had a terrible day. He was absolutely gutted by it. But they're still in P7 because none of their rivals got a point yeah. either. There's so much to play for coming into Abu Dhabi. So much, so much. Uh, a joyous weekend, a joyous day, a brilliant race, but tinged with sadness because this will be the last day of the season with Mr. James Hinchcliffe. Alas. Alas. James, <laughs> here are your best bits. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm absolutely delighted that James Hinchcliffe is back with the F1 TV family. Somewhere where you make your own luck. That was a bad flip. You guys have fun the rest of practice. Well, there goes Hinch. Well, he's already made friends. He appears to have a pit stop of his own. I'm not a member. I don't think I also fit the dress code for today, but I snuck in. That was also a bad boy. It's my turn to talk. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> Why don't we take... What if... No, no, sorry, sorry. We're not allowed to do that. Could you put both hands on the wheel, please, and look at the track? Why? <laughs> God, you're so demanding. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was... the. the that was a shorter video than I was expecting, and then I realized that most of your best bits aren't broadcastable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I do that intentionally, sir. Throw in a good it's curse word every time. It's been such a joy having you here, mate. Thank you so much, guys. It's been yeah. an absolute blast. It, uh, even though that hot lap did make me have to lie down for 20 minutes. You're still yes. feeling a bit I was so, It's made me feel <laughs> nauseous watching it. Some sort of like, oh my God, PTSD. Oh no, not that again. They edited that very well to stop both of you and I swearing. Yes, <laughs> yes. It. yes. Have you enjoyed it? It's been a blast. I mean, got to work with you guys last year for three, this year for six. Nine uh, next nine. year. Nine. <laughs> Keep <gotta> going. <laughs> That's, oh. that's on. We'll see. We'll see who makes that call. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to call Tony out, but, uh, you know, I'm getting it in my ear. Uh, no, guys, it's been amazing. Everybody, you know, back in uh, in England, back at Biggin, who makes this all happen, everyone on the ground with us. It's been so much fun being part of the family for a few races. I'm going to miss you guys, and I'm, I'm going to want to be in Abu Dhabi. We'll miss you uh, I'll be watching on F1 TV. I'll be following along for sure, and can't wait to see you next year. Well, mate, um, we, we tell you you're brilliant all the time, but what is wonderful is to have somebody of your incredible experience, incredible talent, who has been there and done it and has walked the walk, who can turn up and still have that wide-eyed joy and fanaticism and massive appreciation for 
for Formula One as well. It's uh, it's something very unique, and we're very lucky to have you. So yeah. uh, lucky to be a part of it. Come Thank back you soon. Appreciate well, it. Yeah, you've uh, slotted straight into the team as well. Right, Bring it in. right. Oh, uh, here's sweet. your schedule for Abu Dhabi. <laughs> One race to go. As we push this guy back to Canada. Uh, here's where you can catch everything uh, in Abu Dhabi. Thursday, the 23rd. Your weekend warm up. Friday, the 24th. Practice one and practice two. What's that? A practice session that doesn't start at two o'clock in the morning? Marvelous. Practice three on Saturday at 2:30. That's afternoon 2.30, not morning 2.30, qualifying at 6 p.m. And the race at 5 p.m. God, they're civilized times in Abu Dhabi, aren't they? Uh, on Sunday, the 26th of November. Well, folks, that is it from Las Vegas. It doesn't matter which way you cut it, from the back to the front, there were moves with DRS, without DRS. One of the races of the season, Las Vegas, has placed itself on the Formula One map, the entertainment capital of the world provided one of the most entertaining races of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. It's been a joy. We'll see you in Abu Dhabi in a few days' time. For now, from all of us here, a very warm goodbye. season will pass.